So let's talk about the concepts. Uh, virtualization allows us to provide many different features, essentially access to many different computing environments on the same physical machine. A virtual machine, as we well know, is a running operating system which doesn't know that it doesn't have the whole computer to itself. Now, this technically speaking, it sort of kind of knows. And once we start talking about the imp the cybersecurity implementations of some uh, implications of some of this, we'll have to pay attention to the fact that some malware can now figure out um, if it is run being running being run virtualized. Um, it may be as simple as looking at the MAC address of the VM and re looking at the OUI and realizing, wait a minute, this doesn't belong to Broadcom or Intel or Dell or or, or any of the uh, actual physical NIC manufacturers. Um, if you look at the MAC address of your NIC inside a virtual machine, uh, you'll, if you look at the OUI, if you run that against an OUI database, say, for example, Wireshark, uh, has kind of a, a built-in OUI database and will try to translate those things for you if you look at your layer, layer 2 frame information. If it says VMware, then that's a really good indication that Wireshark has figured out, hey, this OUI belongs to a VMware works, uh, hyper, uh, VM. Uh, so the hypervisor is the piece of software which, which allows us to create the environment for those virtual machines. There are, as we well know, two different kinds of hypervisors. The first is a type 1 hypervisor, a bare metal hypervisor. It is essentially a minimal operating system whose sole purpose is to support other VMs. Uh, VMware vSphere, also called ESXi, is like this. Uh, some implementations of Hyper-V are also like this. Now, Hyper-V, depending on how you deploy it, can be both a type 2 and a type 1. A type 2 needs a host OS um, and it runs on top of it. So you, with a type 1 you've got, um, you know, it doesn't have the same, a type 2 doesn't have the same capabilities. It allows you to do other things with your desktop while you're running this VM. With the type 1, that's all you can do. Uh, there usually, there isn't usually a GUI directly um, with, say, with vSphere. You actually have to get into um, the ESXi web, ESXi web client or the vSphere client or something like that just to get to something that looks like a GUI. There is a physical console on that ESXi host, and we'll, but we'll get to that. Anywho, um, so your type 2, of course, you've got your host computer. This, the physical machine, which is providing the physical hardware, which the um, particularly the type 2 hypervisor is virtualizing. Even the type, type, type 1 hypervisor virtualizes. The type 2 has to probably do a little bit more um, because it's also juggling the CPU memory and hardware requirements of the guest operating system. So when I say guest OS, I mean a virtual machine. If I say host OS, I mean, say, Windows or Linux or Mac or whatnot. Um, looking at the whole thing graphically, it looks kind of like this. So we've got our computer in the middle with its physical hardware um, and that scary red light. Um, if I saw a machine like this, particularly in a science fiction movie, I would start getting worried it was about to achieve sentience and decide to be Skynet. Uh, so we've got our Type 1 hypervisor, bare metal, with VMs running on top of it, applications inside those guest OSs. With a Type 2 hypervisor, the hypervisor itself is an application running in the host operating system, and it, in turn, has guest OSs, VMs, guest OSs, applications running inside those. Um, this is the basic framework. Um, uh, I'll be right back, and we're going to talk about start talking about how virtualization software works with those virtual machines. Thanks for watching.